What's up, YouTube? Today we are carrying on with our style study of Merkaba. So in this episode, I kind of want to cover a couple of the more world oriented instruments. And there's a particular pack that I found that is super good for this kind of thing. So obviously you can use samples, there's various free instruments and that kind of thing. But I think for this kind of thing, you know, being able to have, you know, everything you need and being able to browse through it as intuitively as I'm going to show you. Yeah, it's definitely a must if you are into this type of thing and you use a lot of world instruments in your tracks. Anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So today I want to be talking about the UVI World Suite 2. Like I said, you can use samples and there are free instruments and all sorts of stuff that do this kind of thing, but I haven't found any that are, you know, all encompassing packs that sound this good with this many different articulations and all sorts of stuff built in. And, you know, on top of that, being able to load it inside Falcon, you don't have to. Uh, it does come with like a free player if you don't have Falcon. But being able to load the stuff inside Falcon and dive into the patches and find out what's actually going on inside is quite a learning experience on top of that. I want to add an instance of Falcon to this project and we want to start looking through some of the, uh, some of the stuff that is included here. Particularly, I'm looking, uh, well, first off, I'm looking for a kind of didgeridoo type of sound because I think a lot of that uh, stuff is being used in the original Merkaba track that I'm using as a reference here. And I haven't actually found any uh, instruments or plugins or anything that can do a particularly good didgeridoo, but also have a lot of different articulations to choose from for different phrases and that kind of thing in different keys. So like I said, you don't have to have Falcon to be able to use the suite. It does come with like a free player called UVI Workstation. But um, I do have Falcon, so I'm going to just open it up. I'm not going to dive into the kind of more advanced stuff in Falcon. But, you know, if you guys don't have Falcon, you can still get the suite and follow along with uh, UVI Workstation and that kind of thing. So anyway, one of the coolest things about the pack is the way that it's kind of like uh, designed to be easy to browse and that kind of thing. And there's various uh, sort of multi instruments as well as loops and phrases and single instruments to choose from. And they've categorized them either by region, so you know where in the world you kind of want to draw inspiration from, or by type. So this is particularly interesting if you've got a reference track that you're using, and say for example you hear like a mallet type sound or a woodwind or string type sound, you can very easily just you know find a very similar type of sound by you know diving in here and looking for uh, strings. Or if you want to find, for example, you know didgeridoo, I'm not sure if it's going to be a woodwind or whatever, but I do know for example that it comes. From from Australia. So we can go here, Australia, pop this down, and there's a couple of things to choose from, including two different didgeridoos, or at least two different folders of didgeridoos, and each one has uh, a couple of different instruments. So the one has two, the other one has one, and I believe these are the same, but one has some like effects and stuff on it, um, and this one is a slightly different one. So some of them do take uh, quite some time to load, obviously the ones with more like loops and phrases and stuff. So you'll see here, this is didgeridoo phrases. This takes a little bit longer to load than some of the other ones that are just kind of instrument stuff. Um, let's have a listen to some of these things, uh, some of the phrases and sounds built in here. So you'll notice here you've got these red keys and then a bunch of white keys. The red keys are basically key switches. So these will switch between uh, different layers, uh, as I showed in a previous video, um, how to create those and stuff like that. But essentially, let's say, for example, like in this instrument, what it's doing is it's allowing us to choose different pitched didgeridoos. So if you didn't know this, the didgeridoos pitch is determined by the length. Um, so obviously, it's an instrument that can't you know, it's just a single pitch and that's it. So we kind of have to pitch it to the bass. And I think the bass in this track is a G. So we can actually select the G key switch by just clicking on it. Or if you have a bigger keyboard, you can just press it on the actual keys. So I'm going to click that and now we should have a G. Um, and all the phrases now should be in G. <laughs> So listen to those like overtones that kind of like screechy sound. A lot of that kind of stuff is being used in this kind of Merkaba track with some didgeridoo kind of sounds. Um, I'm not going to cycle through all of these keys to show you. I did actually prepare a little MIDI here, uh, which I think triggered 
quite a nice one. Um, let's just have a listen here. So I want to show you guys various ways of working with this, but I'm going to go with the the latter just because CPU and I do like to keep things in audio uh, for various reasons. This is something incredibly powerful about Falcon. So we can, let's say, for example, we found our didgeridoo and we want to layer in a different instrument now. We can click here plus and it adds a new part and we're still you know our browser is still the same so we can go here and find like a different type of instrument like a mallet or something i think is uh, being used in this part of the track as well so we can cycle through some of these and find a different sound and trigger it with a different midi track and also send the audio out of a different audio track and process it uh, with different effects and stuff like that so let's say for example we want a kind of bell kind of thing this has actually got some really nice uh hand pan type of stuff built in so let's go hand pan let's choose one of these so here you can see this a1 and a2 on this part section over here so this correlates to the midi channel that you're wanting to send to and this main out and uh, you can actually set this to out too this correlates to the audio channel that it's sending out to so to get this to work properly in falcon you're going to have to go over to your inspector click this little activate outputs button over here and then click falcon 2 and that's basically going to enable the second output from falcon so if we open up our mixer uh, we can actually drop it uh, down like this uh, we'll see here we've got the main falcon output and then a falcon 2 so hopefully uh, we will have a output coming uh, out of that one which is the hand pan and the didgeridoo is going to come out of the first one so let's right click here say add track add midi track so if we've got the falcon track selected and we add another midi track it's automatically going to assign it to falcon and assign the second midi channel to that so it just makes things a little bit easier for adding multiple tracks and we can go here and do it again add midi track and it's going to do a third one etc 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 i'm going to not do that for this tutorial i don't want a huge multi timbral thing it's going to kind of screw with my cpu especially if i'm recording video as well i just want to show you uh, you know get this to work and let's see if we can test this theory real quick hey it sounds awesome okay so i want to transpose this midi track to a G, I think that's plus seven. Uh, and then we can play, because I only know how to play in C minor. Okay, let's just quantize this. I think this is slightly off here. Sometimes the auto quantize puts it like too early. Okay, that sounds cool, but it's not quite what I'm looking for for this example. I think it's a little bit too kind of like Eastern, um, whereas I think the track had more of a marimba type of thing. So let's see if we can find uh, that type of thing. Okay, so sometimes if you've put the MIDI in already and it might trigger like the lower octave, then what you can do is, and we're already transposing, we can actually just add another MIDI modifier, pitch it up at 12, rather than going into each one and transposing the MIDI, if that makes sense, the actual keys in the clip. Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want to work with these things in audio. So I'm going to create a record group and record that directly into an audio channel. Um, so how we do that is let's actually pull up the mixer again. We can actually send both of these uh, just so to make things easier when recording both channels. And we can actually do like two instruments at a time so we can get like a call and response type of thing going. Um, so anyway, add group channel to selected tracks. And let's call this rec group, record group. And then we want to add an audio track and we want to click audio inputs, set this to record group. Now what we can do is we can solo this Falcon layer, the one with the didgeridoo, solo this record audio and then just hit record. Now we can remove it.
So another thing I want to show you guys is how cool these kind of like vocal instrument or vocal travelers, they are call them, uh, are that are built in here. What these are, are essentially kind of like multi instruments with various layers of vocal stuff. So one octave will be one thing, another octave will be another thing pitched uh, to fit that specific key. So obviously you can go in and you can change various settings, but there are stuff like built in for different kind of like vibes. Okay, there was like a plucky stringy thing that I wanted to create as well. So let's check out what we can find in strings. later.
as you can see, I've done some uh, housekeeping on this project with these kind of like world instruments. Um, so essentially, like my thoughts behind this particular folder was I tried to kind of group alike instruments together. So I've got like all the didgeridoos together in a folder. Uh, I've got all the kind of string type things together in a folder. I'll show you this MIDI as well, just in case you guys are wondering. Tuning is a bit different because I noticed, I think that, that um, in the original, they are using 432 hertz, whereas I'm using 440. So there's a slight inconsistency with the tuning, but I believe this is um, the kind of MIDI that was happening there. Dum, 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 da, da, dum. Um, and then there's this Mbira as well, which I'll show you the MIDI of that guy as well. Dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum. You can pause the screen uh, at that part if you do want to copy those. Anyway, so all the strings uh, together, I've got them grouped. Um, I kind of wanted this combination. Some of them were more kind of reverberant. Some of them were more plucky. So, and, and I wanted to accentuate some hits as opposed to others. So I had them all on various channels here. These ones are kind of grouped, uh, sent all of these through to a strings group. So here you'll notice uh, like some of these have uh, delay on them. I'll just play you uh, the separates. Whereas like some of the other ones I wanted to accentuate more of like a reverbery type vibe. So it's kind of about the combination of these four that makes that kind of complete stringy. Uh, it's almost like a string chorus kind of vibe or a couple of string instruments playing together. So yeah, like I said, all of these kind of alike instruments were uh, grouped into folders and then I sent each of these into their own groups. As you can see, the colors kind of correspond to the folders there below. And then all of these I sent through to a kind of complete world group, just in case, you know, just to make things easier if I want to kind of turn all of the volumes down, you know, rather than jumping into each channel and doing that just makes things easier to work in groups and stuff like that. But then furthermore, I've kind of got these sending through to a send, a send effect reverb. So I'm gonna mute this so you can hear the difference with and without. So the reason I did this, uh, you know, kind of contained all of these world sounds within a single send reverb is it often sounds a lot more realistic to do it this way. And you still have enough control. For example, um, I'm going to open up this channel here. You can see with the djembes, for example, like the percussion stuff, I didn't want as much reverb on those. So the amount of send on that is reduced compared to, for example, like the didgeridoos, I wanted a little bit more. And then like these mbiras and strings, I wanted kind of like full reverb on those. So it's a nice way of kind of containing everything within a single space, because um, then it allows me to send this reverb back into this group and process them all kind of together. You know, it creates like one volume control over the entire world group. And also the other reason why it's nice to use a reverb on a send channel is I can process the uh, kind of pre and post EQs uh, using the channel EQs like this. Um, and a bit of, uh, I also applied a bit of LFO tool to give it a slight pumping action. So I'm gonna accentuate this. Uh, let me just put a volume plugin after here. Um, so we can accentuate this volume so you can really hear what's happening with this reverb.
Yeah, and then I guess once you have, you know, all of your elements in there, it's about, you know, rearranging them, um, you know, getting them to kind of like evolve over time, you know, as as you can see here, slowly um, introducing each element bit by bit. I mean, I could even do a little bit more where, for example, like, you know, mute some of these and then uh, bring them in. So it's like, for example, some of the strings play and then more of them and then more of them. So it kind of gets bigger and bigger. Um, until they kind of break or transition or something like that. But, you know, once we've got all the elements in there, I guess it's about juggling them around and seeing which arrangements work better. Um, you know, we could juggle things around slightly, uh, take some parts out, put some parts uh, in at, you know, faster tempos or something like that and create transitions and stuff. And this is another thing that I've noticed, um, which is quite prevalent with Merkaba, is he uses a lot of the same instruments over the entirety of the track but the way that they transition between these different parts is very important and the rhythms that these things have vastly differs over the entirety of the track. So I think that's important. Specifically with this track, actually, I noticed that the breaks are kind of like a little bit uh, before when you'd expect them to be. So I prepped something here and, you know, usually, for example, if we'd, uh, let's loop like this eight bar section here, um, the beginning of the next segment actually begins one bar early which is strange and usually it would be kind of very audible like this major difference but i guess it's about you know building this kind of transition up to that part so here like what i started to do is slowly you know bring out like the bass and then slowly bring out some of these percussion and world elements you know change the rhythm of things a little bit here so i moved this didgeridoo one bar early um, this rain stick one bar early and then there's like this kind of transition synth effect that I made with phase plant which I also moved one bar early so for example throughout the entirety of the track there's a couple of these sounds that are playing just at the transition of the bar and this kind of builds this momentum and in your brain it kind of tells you like okay the bar is about to change the bar is about to change and so when you place these sounds slightly off, your brain picks it up. Okay, the bar is about to change again. Even though it's completely off the grid, you can still make it work. Check this out as an example. So I've also done like a bit of a bass change here to just a kind of single offbeat rhythm. Uh, I'll actually show you this as well. Just a single bass note. Um, I just chopped the bass note from here and then just repeated that. So, you know, to create like more of a momentum as the track is kind of progressing. And I think I removed some of the FM stabs from the synths, but anyway, this is the example. Awesome. That's about it for today. If you want more of this kind of thing, let me know in the comments. If you haven't yet subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you like this video, hit that like button. See you guys next time. Cheers.